Okay, so with the database picker, you need to start by defining a resource. A resource is a connection to another database or a uh, LDAP picker or the local database. Um, if you look at the documentation, we have, where's the documentation gone? We have um, fairly comprehensive documentation on this, including all of the possible new customizations that you can do and an actual walkthrough where you can use the local JIRA database to basically write a project picker. Um, but I thought I would use a real database. So I found this um, uh, Postgres docket image that contains a world database. So it has all the countries and the cities of the world. Now this is just for me to go through an example. I mean, I wouldn't really suggest writing um, something based on this, but you know, if you have an external database, uh, it might contain customers or orders or part numbers or, you know, God only knows what. For our example, I'll be using this world database. Um, so I've run up the, I've run up the Docker container. Um, you don't have to use Docker. Obviously you can use any database hosted anywhere. So long as you can make a connection to it from Jira. Uh, so let's start by creating a resource. So I've already created one, but I'll show you what that looks like. So give it a name. I've called it world DB. Uh, the JDBC URL, which you can work out from many websites. So basically, the database is running locally on port 5432, and the actual database name is WorldDB. It's a Postgres database, so I put that the driver there. And the username and password I got from the information on Docker Hub here. Okay, so let's just test that that works. Uh, we don't need to put any SQL in yet. So if you click preview, you should see that it's um, made a connection. Um, uh, once you save it, we'll create a pool so that every time you access it, we're not creating a new connection, but you're just borrowing a connection from the pool. And this is much faster than creating a new connection each time, which is why we introduced this whole resources section. Um, you can also do some previews of the data. So let's just take a look at the country table. So the, the goal here is to write a country picker. Okay, now let's look at the columns in this table. We've got a name, that's good. That's what we're gonna want the user to start typing and search on. Uh, we have like the three digit ISO code. Um, there's a load of other, or the continent, we may, we may make use of that if time allows. A whole load of other information that would be really good for kind of exercises if I was uh, tasking someone um, so, you know, do some interesting things. Uh, and finally, the other thing that we're going to use is this two digit country code, which is another ISO standard. So when we write a database picker, all we're doing is we're getting a user to select a record from a table or a view. Okay, so we need something that will uniquely identify that row and won't change. Um, most uh, tables are going to have an auto generated uh, unique counter, but this one doesn't. So we'll use the two, di two digit country code. Okay. Um, country names do change rarely, uh, but if you're, if you're doing this yourself and you're linking to say a table of custom customers or products, those do change name. So you don't want the unique key to be the customer's name because it, it may well change. You want that to be the unique ID. So just remember, we're going to use this code to the name and maybe the continent. Okay, so let's just, so the next thing we're gonna do, create a field. Uh, well, I've already done it because it's really hard doing things from scratch, but I will kind of build it up as we go and we'll talk it through. Uh, so I've just called it country. Some sort of description is not important. I need to select which database connection to use. Now, these are the two kind of critical SQL queries to you, that you have to enter. And I suspect this, this is where people are getting stuck, possibly. Um, we've designed it this way because it's it make it as flexible as possible and handle all the different cases. Let's start with the search SQL. So this is the query that's going to be executed when the user starts typing. And it needs to return the unique ID that was stored and the thing that will be displayed in the dropdown, which is the name. Um, the only other... Oh yeah, and we'll pass in what they type in this um, parameter marker, question mark. And we're gonna concatenate, that's concatenating 
this dialect of SQL. We're going to concatenate it with a wildcard character. Okay, uh, and we're going to lowercase both of them. Well, I'll show you why. So if I preview it, uh, boom, we've got our list of countries. I can start typing and it will zoom in. Um, if we didn't lowercase the, what the user's typed in the country, you'd have to um, get the casing right, which would be really annoying for users. So that's why we lowercase both of them. Okay, so that's our basic country picker. So let's just save that and um, uh, see all my good stuff that's to come. Okay, our basic country picker. Uh, what's your favorite country? Albania. Uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Jamie, that was a good one. <laughs> well, some of the, a lot of countries that actually exist, uh, I mean, you've still got Yugoslavia here, and my favorite country is not actually listed here. Uh, uh, where was I? Ryan's distracted me. Okay, so we've just got a plain old picker now, and we can actually search on this as well. Um, the next thing I wanted to do was kind of jazz this up a li little bit. Like when I'm picking, it would be nice to show the flag that might aid recognition, but also it just looks nice. So browsing around the internet, I noticed this site where you can use any of the two digit country code and get the flag. Okay. Uh, so that brings me on to all of the different ways that you can customize these pickers now. Um, the way we opted to do it was through code, which is kind of our philosophy, rather than having a massive complex form, uh, you implement um, callbacks effectively uh, to customize the display and the search and so on. So let's take a look at how we could add the flag to the left of the um, country name. So it's all through this configuration script. script. Click uh, shows snippets, and I'm going to search for icon. So this is the one we want. Set an icon for each option in the drop down. Copy it into here. These are just templates, and you have to kind of put in the implementation yourself. But in this case, all we need to do is return a URL to an icon file. Um, and we're passed in uh, uh, an object representing the row that was selected um, when we typed. Okay, so let me, based on that URL I just showed you, we're going to return this flagpedia thingy and we're going to take this two digit country code from our row and insert it into the URL. Okay, let's give that a go. Boom. So that's nice. That's a, that's a good start. Um, you're not, you probably won't have icons for things unless they are user, users that might have a picture or products or countries. Other than that, you're probably not going to have that. But you can, you could also um, modify the way this is displayed by adding additional information. You could add additional HTML to try and like, guide the user into uh, selecting the correct thing. Uh, okay, so now we've done that. It would be, let's go back to looking at this guy. Um, we have all this other data in the database about Albania. Um, we can um, decorate this name with some additional information. So if you have products, you might, you might show the price or a picture of it or whatever. Now, the way that we, we're going to do that is by customizing the display value. Okay. So here we'll just implement something that we'll just create an HTML string based on uh, the display value that's passed to us or the other items in the row. Now, I'm going to show you one that I've created earlier because, like I say, um, and I called it World DB Tutorial which is in this file. I don't know if you can see this properly, but I better go into presentation mode. No, bear with me. Oh, it's not, it's not playing, not playing ball today. Presentation modes, that one. 
Okay, so this, that's the closure that we just had in the inline script, but now we're putting it into a file. And we've all, we're also implementing this render view HTML. Now I've made this look, I made this appear very complicated, but it's not really. Um, we get the row and from the row, we can look at the country name, uh, the continent, and we also have the, the country code. So let's just look at what that looks like. If I refresh this um, page that had a selected value, that nothing happened at all because I did something wrong. I didn't save perhaps. Try again. So now I've got the country name and the continent. Okay. Now I'm just, in all of this code here, although it looks complicated, all we're doing is writing an HTML string that um, includes the image from the dropdown, same as the dropdown. Uh, it has the country name and in another, in italics, in a small gray, we're gonna put the continent. Just trying to make it look pretty and these divs um, uh, just allow us to place things side by side in HTML. The reason for using the markup builder is it guarantees that we have well-formed HTML. So we don't have, we don't leave open tags. Um, and it will also ensure that if there's any, um, any, any value from the database is correctly encoded for HTML, which is an important way of avoiding cross-site scripting attacks. Okay, so let's refresh our page with this. Um, now that's, that looks pretty, I'm kind of happy with that. Um, the, the other reason I would recommend using a file rather than an inline script is because you can quickly make changes and refresh without having to edit your custom fields, save it and so on. So let's just, if we decided we wanted to put this uh, name in bold rather than having uh, a span here, we could just change that to a B, B for bold in HTML, refresh. Uh, and it's bold. Okay. Um, so that's that's how you. How am I doing for time? Oh, it would be another five good minutes. To move on. Huh? It would be okay to move on if we can. But if you want to take a little more time on the database picker, no one's going to say no to you, Jamie. Okay, I would say five more minutes. Um, this. So if, if we're in the list view, we run a query it might be a bit overpowered to have that kind of display in the uh, list view of the issue navigator. So again, there's another closure called render column HTML. So this will be called for the view that we just looked at. And in this case, we're past the display value that we would have shown if you hadn't implemented either of these. Um, so we're just going to take that and return that. So when we refresh, we have the, just the plain old country name. Okay, so this is where it gets a bit involved, but people have asked us, how in the query can you use attributes of the issue or the, users, the current user's roles or groups? You might want to restrict their access just to certain records in the database, or you might want to have other, other fields that kind of inform the SQL query so you can drill down on records. Um, the way that we're gonna do that is I have created a, a single select just a bog standard single select with the continents of the world. What I want to happen is when I select uh, whatever, Antarctica, I only want to see the countries from Antarctica. The way we do that is yet again, another closure. We override, well, we implement get search SQL. Now this is passed the input value that the user has typed, uh, the current issue, and the original value, which we'll come to in a bit. The original value being if the issue already had a saved value before it was edited. Now the issue object is what I'd call live. So it will reflect um, when, you, when you get attributes of the issue, there will be um, what the user has put on the form then and there. They're not from the database, they're kind of live. So plain old Jira API, we're gonna get the consonant custom field and get the value and then plug that into our SQL statement. So it's the same SQL as we had in the form, um, but we're also going to filter on, con on the continent that they've put there. Okay, so go back to my uh, thingy. Now if I choose Africa, 
a small delay while it recompiles, then we only have countries in Africa, Antarctica, so on. Now, the best friend of get search SQL is get validation SQL. So this will allow you to validate that the two, um, that the, uh, what you've chosen actually match the continent. Okay. It's the same, it's the same sort of thing. Uh, so th this would stop me if I, if I chose that's in Antarctica and then I change this to Africa and I try and create the issue, it's going to tell me, sorry, mate, you need to choose a country in Africa. Okay. Now there was, I'm, cause I'm overrunning a bit. April had a question. Hi April. April had a question about how do you, re how do you represent data, um, disabled values? which is a great question. I mean, I have an answer for it and it's in the documentation. I was going to demonstrate it with um, Benin. I was going to disable Benin, poor Benin. Um, but I don't think there's time, but it is explained here in the documentation. Uh, you need to have a column that represents whether the row is enabled or not. And then there's a way of allowing uh, issues with that value to remain valid, but you can't create new issues. Um, with invalid values, exactly in the same way that select list options work.